Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the IBFW Hillier Gate Sports Center. I, Paul Barba, joined by Eric Agnew on color tonight. Southern Indiana making the stop up here in Fort Wayne. Number 14 in the nation, the Screaming Eagles. 10 and 1 overall, 5 and 0 in the conference. This is an important game for Southern Indiana. IPFW, a two game winning streak of their own, 5 and 7 and 2 and 2 in the conference. They're just making their way on the floor. And Eric, Southern Indiana, you're familiar, you're from that part of area, uh, the area, and you know about this team coming out of Evansville. Yeah, being from Southern Indiana, you get a lot from down there out of Evansville. And I know five or six of the players on the team personally. And they're a tough squad. They didn't lose many people from last year. It should be really tough. Chris Bowles. Comes in six foot ten, two twenty five, averaging about eighteen points, seven rebounds, tonight. and he's an All American back for them. And they have a junior college transfer who's lighting it up. He's put Ronnie Combs as starting guard. This guy, Ronnie Combs, was All Conference last year. He's on the pine. He's riding behind a guy who's averaging twenty two. Stan Juard comes out of junior college, and I guess a little unknown really um, coming in the conference, averaging twenty two points a game. We had. Like I said before, we had a little prediction from his brother for 25. 25, he says. Well, IPFW on the other side has a couple guys who've been playing well of late. Lamb Bullard was player of the week last week in the Great Lakes Valley Conference, averaging 30 a contest. And the win over Kentucky Wesleyan was as high as number four in the poll. Uh, last Thursday night, IPFW 90-84 win. They had a big night from Scott Simmons, 23 in the first half, 24 overall. And Russ Marsnick, the point guard, 15 points, 12 assists. Yeah, Scott really lit it up in the first half. His confidence was really going. Um, I'm, Scott, I'm Scott's roommate, so I've heard it all. And he wasn't having too good of a couple weeks before that uh, since Christmas. And he came out the other night and just lit it up in the first half. Well, these two teams have a pretty intense rivalry. Uh, Discussing just a little bit before we came on, these two teams were going down to the wire last year for a berth in the national tournament. And uh, you might remember a guy, Andre Walton, point guard for IPFW last year, had a little something going on with Tyrone Tra uh, Tate, rather, and uh, exchanging pleasantries in the end, might have gotten a little more. So there's a little bit of a rivalry going on here. Bruce Pearl, you might remember him from Iowa, uh, assistant coach there. Not going to drag Deion Thomas's name into this too much, but <laughs> that's where people will remember him from. He's a, a second year coach now. Uh, got coach of the year honors in the Great Lakes Valley Conference last year. So there's a lot of little interesting tie ins to this game. Even though it might not look like on paper it's going to be a close game, I think the rivalry is going to take over. It was an intense rivalry last year. Um, USI went in down there, IPFW went in by, I believe, 12 here. Then going to the tournament and a consolation game, both teams really not up for the consolation game, and the USI took it pretty handily. So the stage is set right now. We're about 140 away from uh, getting the national anthem. Eric's going to be uh, doing double duty tonight, going to run down to do the national anthem, and then come back up here and give us some color on the night. IPFW looking to win three straight. Started off really struggling. They lost to a tri state team in NAIA school. You know, not, not to knock on Tri-State because they have a very fine team up there this year, but when you lose to a school that is under you and as far as terms of like Division One, Division Two, and then you go down to NAIA after Division Three, that doesn't bode well for the people looking down the line to make tournament selections. Yeah, they did get off to a slow start. People are starting to pick it up a little now, namely Land Bullard and Scott Simmons are big people. Need to need to pick it up a little more. Hillel Watkins, Shane Gibson, Scott Ponstead, get in the action a little more, score and rebound. But they're going to come around, I think. Okay, so really, IPFW is not out of postseason aspirations. They're 2-2 two two overall in the Great Lakes Valley Conference. They get something going here, they might be able to pull it out, get a postseason a bit somewhere. But they got to start it tonight against Southern Indiana. We're going to let Eric go right now. He's going to go down to the floor and uh, do a stirring rendition, I'm sure, of the national anthem. Oh, I'll try to. All right, Eric, we'll let you go now. About 30 seconds away. It's a big game, as we mentioned. Southern Indiana coming in here. 5 0. Oh, number 14 in the nation. 10 and 1 overall. It's a road game that you want to win because you can't afford many road losses. You figure you're going to win all your games at home. You want to win this conference. St. Joe is another team that is looking to surprise. And it's going to be very tough to win against St. Joe, even in Evansville, in Southern Indiana. Let's go downstairs for the starting lineups. Southern Indiana Screaming Eagles and your IPFW Mastodons. 
now would you all please rise and join Eric Agnew in the singing of our national anthem. Oh, say can. This is just one of the many parts you can play as a young Red Cross volunteer. Volunteer and play your part. Talk about unusual. How often do you see transparent televisions? Americans have more money to spend on leisure activities than ever before. When possible, children should trick-or-treat during daylight hours and be accompanied by at least one adult. A boat archaeologists believe is from the time Jesus and his disciples fished on the Galilee. For best results, fertilize your lawn when it is actively growing. Many people suffer from allergies. Few understand them. He's coming up here, that voice you heard on the national anthem. He'll be uh, doing the mic on the color and side. And now, tonight's starting lineup. Let's stick around First, down at the VA table and get the starting lineups for the Screaming Eagles of Southern Indiana. A guard from Evanston, Indiana, number three, Brian Hubner. A guard from Chicago, Illinois, number 11, Tyrone Tate. A forward from Danville, Illinois, number 25, Stan Gerard. At center from Madison, Kentucky, Madisonville, Kentucky, number 30, Chris Bowles. And a forward. From Lagoonie, Indiana, number 32, Jeff Doyle. The Eagles are coached by Bruce Pearl, assistant coach Rick Hurts. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for your IPFW Mastodon. Starting at guard, from Hammond, Indiana, number 21, Russ Marcinek. At another guard, from Grand Rapids, Michigan, number 23, Scott Simmons. At forward, from Lanesville, Indiana, number 24, Shane Gibson. At the other forward, from Flint, Michigan, number 40, Lan Bullard. And at center, from Muncie, Indiana, number 54, Jason Burkhart. The Macedons are coached by assistant coach Dick Dominion and head coach Andy Piazza. Your officials for tonight's game are Brian Oswald, John Steamer, and Dave Carlson. Quickly, one more time for Southern Indiana, 6'10 in the pivot. Chris Bowles, All-American back for his senior season. Brian Huber, or Hubner rather, number three, is a guard position. He is the guard replacing Ronnie Combs. Tyrone Tate, a guard back, number 11 for Southern Indiana, rounding up the lineup. Number 30, Jeff Doyle in a forward position. And Stan Jeward, Jeward. We'll get that right as we go along. Number 25, keep an eye out for him. He's the leading scorer at 22 of 5. Just Tate with the ball. IPFW out, a man to man. Oh, 
Williams now on the outside looking down. Patient offense exhibited by Southern Indiana. This ball's knocked away by Skim Simmons, rather, first turnover of the night. Lord now Marsnick thinks better about it. Gonna reset. Simmons brings it outside. This is Marsnick now. Southern Indiana also out in man to man early on. Shane Gibson. Jason Burkhardt getting another start. Walk on out of Muncie Central. This is Land Bullard. Marsnick now. 13 on the shot clock now. Going to reset. Look down low. It's going to be real important for Rocky FW to control the tempo in this game so they can get away from him. USI is a running team. Four on the clock, and that's going to be three free throws for Land Bullard. Not really a smart foul with four seconds on the shot clock, as you said, Paul. And Land Bullard being a good shooter may have hit the shot, but I think that was a pretty poor foul. Well, big rip down, big rip down at the other end by Scott Simmons. He follows up, saving the board down underneath. And Bullard is going to be the recipient now. Three free throws. Down on the defensive end. Uh, if you can see it, Paul, they were kind of double, doubling down on Bowles. He is a big body there. And as I told you earlier, there is a scout here tonight from the Seattle Supersonics. Kind of scouting on Bowles. He was here also the Thursday night's game, checking out Kentucky Wesleyan's Carlos Skinner. Skinner did not impress him, only five points. Bowles is a 6'10 player, but he will play out on the perimeter, and he will shoot it from out there as well. Yeah, especially in the NBA, uh, Paul. If he made it in the NBA, he would be 6'10, but his body size, he is a little small to play underneath the big ones. Well, Bowler gets two of three. It's two nothing early on. Just a minute in. This is Bowles handling the ball on the outside. IBFW showing a press. Second turnover now. Southern Indiana. Bowler comes back. Turnover no. Still scrambling. Saves it. This is Marsnick out. Sean Shane Gibson rather the ball. Good Sean hustle, his brother. Good hustle so far by IBFW on two steals on the defensive end in the opening two minutes of the game. 19 on the clock, and IPFW a little tentative in the offense right now. Against Kentucky Wesleyan Thursday night, they opened it up from the outside with Simmons and Marsnick bombing. This is Burkhart, got away with the travel, though he did. First turnover for IPFW. I think uh, Big Country, as he's called there by his teammates, got a, had, had a notion of shooting, but then saw big 6'10 bowls in the lane. So he kind of dragged that pivot foot a little bit. Saw a little bigger country in front of him. Oh, yeah. Buller coming up empty with his steals. This is Bulls, number 30 with the ball now, out to Tate. IPFW really stretched out in that man-to-man. -man. Southern Indiana pulling them out. Juard now working baseline, has room for. Nice jumper on the baseline by Juard to get free from the defense right there. Burkhart filling the lane, Bullard with the assist, 4-2. IPFW out early, the pressure, Tate got away with the walk, wasn't called. Now this is Juard over to Tate. IPFW able to pack it in a little closer, man-to-man. -man. Marsnick on Jewart, that's a mismatch. Bowles inside, Burkhart with a foul. Got there late. There might be trouble inside if our big men, if IPFW's big men get foul trouble early. Uh, Jason Burkhart fouled out of Thursday's game, Ed, did, uh, Scott Fonestock, so you might see Fonestock off the bench early in the rotation for Burkhart. Got a short, uh, shot rather a little earlier there, Bruce Pearl. Longtime Iowa assistant under Dr. Tom Davis. I don't know what the doctorate is in. I believe it's physical education, but it's a doctorate nonetheless. And Bowles on the line now for two. Into the game for Southern Indiana comes 6'7", Todd Jones. And he's down from around my area as well. He can uh, play inside because he's got the body, but he also shoots a three pretty good. Scott Jones comes into the contest tonight, averaging just under nine, uh, 10 points a game at 9-3. Bulls makes one of two. 4 3 contest, 17 35, just two and a half in to tonight's action. Both teams. That may be a mismatch right there, Paul. Land Bullard is probably a couple steps quicker than Jones as he picks up the foul. Fighting through the pick that time, number 40 is going to pick up the foul. Scott Simmons had good position there for the pick. Jones just plowed over him, being the bigger player. Gets in the game and gets warm by committing a foul, laying some body on some people. Southern Indiana's second team foul. 
UW trouble inbounding. Get it into Shane Gibson now. Fresh shot clock. Gibson all the way to the hole for two. Good, good drive by Shane. He saw Bowles was still behind him, so he just went ahead and took it to the hole. Good sign, but Gibson gets beat at the other end. Juar, though, out of bounds. Got an in line. Turnover number three for Southern Indiana. Only three minutes into the contest. 6-3 the count. Simmons trying to add and does. That was good patience by Land Bullard. He had Jason Burkhardt down there with defense by Chris Bowles and he waited for Simmons to come up and hit the little 15-foot jumper. Outside, this is Huebner missing. Jeward with the board. He's the second leading rebounder. Bullard with the block. Land Bullard just came from out of nowhere and just totally surprised Todd Jones on that block. Boy, Jeward might have flipped an ankle down there. He's calling for someone to come in. Purity came down on someone else's foot. If we can get a replay of that, that would definitely hurt. 22 plus a game. He's a big part of this Southern Indiana offense. Scott Taylor into the contest for Jordy. He's going to have a seat on the bench and get that ankle looked at. Scott Taylor only a sophomore, but very athletic from what I remember from last year. This is Bowles inside drop step bucket. Three for Bowles, 8-5 lead now. IPFW against a pressure. Arsenic beating it, has the numbers. Bullard spotting. High Archer, nothing. Land shot the air ball, but Taylor down there with the mistake, stepped out of bounds on the rebound. Fourth turnover for Southern Indiana. Burkhart now coming out, and Jermaine Williams in the mix now, number 44. Down underneath, big body. Jermaine is a big body, but only standing 6'4". Might hurt playing against a 6'10 bull. They list him 6'6", six, six, but 220. He can lay some body on bull. Simmons up with the board. Thinks better about putting it back up. Marcinic spotty. And a continuation. Marcinic has really solidified that point position. Bullard coming up blank on his second block. Hubner with a tip. Second time doesn't go. Sticking around Jones. And we're going to have a push off underneath. Good rebounds by Southern Indiana underneath. I thought Shane Gibson had the block, but he got called for the push with his other hand. Gibson picks up the first. We're even at two apiece foul situation. Just over four minutes into the contest. 15-59 left. IPFW out 11-5 early on. It's been spread around. Five players in the column for IPFW. This is Jones now has another. Simmons off the pick, doesn't have it. Ten on the clock. Marsnick got to get loose with it now. Three on the clock. Simmons has to go up with it. That's a turnover for IPFW. That ball never reached the higher. USI playing good pressure outside on the guard. Simmons and Marsnick as we see uh, backup point Jeff Jackson come in. Again. Well, Russ Marsnick, they list him at a 5'9". He might be 5'9", but uh, he's definitely going against a taller player. Tyrone Tate, 6'1". He's going to have to deal with that pressure out on top, and he's going to have to use his quickness to beat Tate. 35-second 30 se violation, rather, turns it over. Second for IPFW. And this is Bowles. Step in by Gibson. Fifth turnover for Southern Indiana. Player in the contest for IPFW number 20 or number 50, rather. Jeff Jackson saw some time early. Ah, point. Williams with a strong move and one. Jermaine got the basket because he went with the whole strong that time. Ball, the defender was set. Jermaine went straight up and he got the blocking foul call. Todd Jones, second foul of the contest, three for Southern Indiana. 
That'd be worth another look. Williams that time. Nice feed inside. Stan Juard is back in the contest. Got the right ankle taped up. Williams now with a free throw and hits. Three point play for Williams. Extends the lead out to seven. 14 7 and 15 0 3. Big lead. Good start for Andy Piazza, IBFW coach. Leo Watkins back, or uh, entering the game rather for the first time. Jeff, Wa uh, Jeff Jackson, let me get that out. He's out of the contest. And Lance Bullard also a seat. Well, Leo Watkins adds a little more size inside for IPFW against the bigger USF team. This is Tate now over the balls. Bulls playing a lot outside might impress that supersonic coach. He is playing a lot outside, not just staying in the paint as he here with the drive. Who puts the ball down on the floor looking for Juar. Juar looking like he got away with a travel that time. No it's call. Number six. Sixth turnover for Southern Indiana. And we're only five minutes into this contest. 14-38. Bruce Pearl, Southern Indiana, going to take a timeout, talk it over. 14-7 IPFW out in front. Right now, the leading score for IPFW. Russ Marsnick with a three, and uh, Jermaine Williams with that three point play. We've got four other players with two points, so uh, a diversity there for Coach Piazza of IPFW, who's starting his sixth year here. He hasn't had a losing season uh, 13 years. College Cable Access Program Guide provides information about our programming, including IPFW Sports Telecast. To receive your free Channel 6 Program Guide, send your name, address, and zip code to Channel 6 at IPFW, 2101 Coliseum Boulevard East, Fort Wayne, Indiana. Zip code 05. Give us a call at 481-6000. Again, that's free. It doesn't cost you anything. Just send your name and zip code in there. And you can catch up to, uh, up to the date. Listings on all the live telecasts. That little fella that might be a mastodon in about 12 years. Eric Southern Indiana coming out, committing six turnovers. Not really getting a flow offensively, and Tate has not done the job at point for Southern Indiana right now. Well, first five minutes of the game, you can't have six turnovers and expect to control the flow of the offense. IPFW is controlling it very well right now. We just need to start containing the inside where they're scoring their buckets. Craig Martin in number 12, also at the guard position, perhaps to shore up the offense. Gibson with his second bucket of the game, 16-7, biggest lead uh, of the game for IPFW. That's a good shot for Shane, coming off a pick on the baseline, little wide open jumper. Juard floating right down to the block. That time, no one picked him up after he was struggling outside to regain possession. Just slipped in uncontested down the lane. Four points for Juard. They've got Shane Gibson inside. Only standing 6'5", could have trouble in there guarding Juard and Taylor and somebody like Chris Bowles. Shane Gibson did it. A great job against Kentucky Wesleyan with the interior defense the last game. And Marcinek with a turnover. Third turnover for IPFW. But it was really crucial. He uh, did not get in the scoring column all that much. Only had 11 points. His defense, and especially his defensive intensity, dictated the tempo against Kentucky Wesleyan. Watkins picks up a foul. Not a smart one. Yeah, Gibson didn't score a lot against Kentucky Wesleyan, but he hit some key three-pointers down the stretch, I believe. He, he wanted the ball. He's a senior. Uh, he took the pressure and, and hit when it counted. And credit also to Gibson. Then we'll get off uh, uh, him after this point. He was an All-American coming in here at preseason. And, uh, you know, he's had to adjust to the role. All-American, you think he's going to be getting the ball a lot and scoring, like this man, Stan Jewer, with six points. But he's adjusted nicely to the role. And every team needs role players. Right now, IPFW needs a bucket, 16-11, four straight points for Southern Indiana. Williams taking bowls out high but for Watkins. Double posts. Marcinic now Simmons with the ball. 13 on the clock. Simmons. Probably a lot of pushing underneath that time. 
Juard going to pick up the foul, is it? Yep. Juard, first foul on him. Had the push on Watkins, I believe, underneath. Team, team foul number four on Southern Indiana. That's the second on Juard. Or Juard. I'll get it right. Scott Bonestock coming to the game for IBFW number 20. Number 33 in the game, Neil Coyle. For Southern Indiana. Neil Coyle, another Southern Indiana boy, went to West Washington High School. Down there where I'm from. Pretty good player in high school, and he can, he can mix it up in the inside, too. Southern Indiana, you see a lot of the players on the floor from that region, and uh, a lot of the players were second and third team All-State players. Their senior seasons, Neil Coyle being one of them. Boy, Gibson might have got away with a push off there, not called. Southern Indiana really extending the defense. IPFW has to work it inside. Simmons with a drive. I think Shane Gibson did get away with a little push there, Paul, but... Uh, a couple seconds later, I think Tate got him back with an elbow at the top of the key. This is Martin for three, and stroke and foul on Gibson. I think he's coming out now. Smithy jumps off the bench. Piazza not happy with that foul. Three-point shot. Well, I don't know. Boy, this is going to make it a small IPFW lineup. Smithy now in the game. He basically got three guards in the game now. What a high advantage for Southern Indiana. Well, Simmons, the tallest guard at 6'1", and Marsnick and... Smithy listed 5'9 apiece, I believe. Maybe Smithy 5'10. Don't know if they're quite that tall. Might be a little generous. Yeah. <laughs> Might be. And then Fonstock and Watkins mixing it up inside. It's a small squad out there. They're going to look to Fonstock in the out, uh, uh, inside in the outside shot. For one of those three guards. Fonstock comes from the Evansville area as well. Uh, University of Evansville transfer this year to IPFW. And Eric, is this his last season or will he have another season here? No, this is his senior year. He played three years at Evansville. The transfer here. Well, that's the way you beat it. Leo Watkins showing an old problem, having trouble handling on the ball, but uh, Coach Piazza got to be happy with the way the press was broken that time. 18-13 game, IPFW on top. Critical juncture right here. Simmons broke the press. I think Watkins was thinking dunk a little early there and lost the handle. This is Tate on the bounce going to the rim, and yes. First bucket for Tyrone Tate. Smithy over the timeline. Plenty of time to set up. Watkins wants it underneath. Bonestock got hit on the arm, not called. Going to be a turnover. Turnover number five for IBFW. They're catching up to Southern Indiana. Unusual stat, Paul, but that's the third air ball of the game for IPFW. Could be a little nervous out here against USI after having the big upset against Kentucky Wesleyan. Stat I don't normally keep. <laughs> it's a good one anyway. Good one to know. I mean, that is sort of indicative. Tate now, second bucket in a row. That's a three-pointer. Ties the game at 18. The 11.50 mark. And three seconds off the clock, so IPFW only seven to get it over. Coming back in, Brian Huebner. Marsden the Kevin. starter. Marston having trouble getting out. The trap threw it off Neil Coyle's leg out of bounds. Well, part of the problem with the smaller players there, they cannot go over the top. That's the way you like to break a press with a pass. Into the game for USI. Another Southern Indiana player five minutes away from my hometown, Ronnie Combs, lightning quick. As you said before, the, the starter not coming off the bench. He's a good one. He's number 24. He's dogging Marsnick right now. This is Smithy with the ball. Boy, they're really extending the defense out there. That time a knee, though. Scott Taylor picks up the foul. Team foul number five. Taylor's first. Uh, it was 16-7 at one point. That was the biggest IPFW lead. Now I'm at a 13, or a scratch that 11-2 run by Southern Indiana to tie the game at 18 apiece. 11.30 to go here in the first half. Paul Farwell along with Eric Agnew. And you missed it, folks, if you didn't hear Eric do the national anthem. He uh, had the people standing. And no, I'm not getting paid to say that. Leo Watkins inside. First bucket of the game for Watkins, 20 to 18. IPFW back in front, much needed basket. Boy, just got it over the timeline. They called 10, but there's still 26 seconds on the clock. 26 on the clock. Boy, Bruce Pearl is 
incensed at that call. I can't believe that he actually called that with eight seconds gone. There was actually 27 on the shot clock. I believe the referee had to start counting himself before the shot clock was turned on. Well, it's another turnover, number seven for Southern Indiana. Gibson trying to make them pay. Yes! Boy, and this is a place where the coach does not want to lose his composure, not, doesn't want to let his team be influenced by what he's feeling right now. 23 to 18. Three miss. Fonestock trying to follow. Bowles gets it inside, gets a hip from Watkins and scores. Shane Gibson with that big three gives him seven so far. If he got going tonight and really got hot, we could see a totally different kind of game. Well, he's concentrating on the defensive end. He is playing down, even on the offense, down on the block. And if they swing him outside, he'd get hot. Very good sign for IVFW. This is Watkins on the bounce. Dishing to Fonestock. Good looking play and one. Good drive and dish from Hillel Watkins to Scott Fonestock to get the bucket in the foul. Watkins goes 6'7, 215. Looked like a point guard on that play. The assist for Watkins. Jermaine Williams going to check in for Watkins. Coach Piazza having a word and a smile with him right now. He's talking about the drive when a Southern Indiana player puts an arm up. Good dish to Fonestock that time. And he misses the three-point play. 25-20, IPFW in the lead. We're halfway through this game. And Williams come in. Williams, rather, Jermaine Williams, just into the contest, picks up the foul. A little pushing and shoving down there on the block between him and Scott Boyd. Williams got caught. Team foul number five for IPFW. Southern Indiana has six. Boy, someone got lost there. Miss inside. Coyle with the rebound spin, and Williams going to pick up that foul. Indeed, his second. In five seconds. But IPFW fell asleep on that inbounds play, Eric. Yeah, they left him wide open. And really, I, I think he was not expecting to be that open. He missed the little layup. Jeff Doyle, number 32, missed the layup. And Coyle came out with a rebound. He has two. Coyle with the rebound. And Jermaine Williams has great legs. Can get up in the air really quick. Went for the block and got called for it. Williams going to have a seat now. Boy, that's disappointing. Comes in and has to come right back out. Burkhart in the contest. Burkhardt in with one foul. Coyle hits the second. It's now a three-point game, 25-22, and Coyle is working that out of bounds line. Might have been over. Gibson now, that's the way you beat the press. Over the top, Gibson spotting. Yes! Good pull up by Shane Gibson. Hits and Jason Burkhardt down on the baseline and decided to take the 12-footer. IPFW with a token 2-1 two, two, press. 27-22, IPFW in the lead. This is Tate with the ball. Neil Coyle now outside. IPFW extending the man-to-man. -man. The big players are out. That's number 45 working down inside. Gets the board, stripped away by Smith. He's got two on one. Fonestock on the wing. Smithy missed. Fonestock board, no. And off Fonestock. I think Fonestock was expecting the dish from Smithy for the dunk. Jeff took it all the way. Tate may have got a piece of it as Smithy missed a layup. Good defense by Tate anyway. Cut down the angle. Took away Fonestock. Made Smithy take it to the hole. Smithy put that one up awkwardly with the right hand. Would have been better served with a left-handed layup. Todd Jones back in the game, number 40. And Stan Jewart back in the game, number 25 for Southern Indiana. 27-22. It's Jones downtown three. Todd Jones is a big body to be in the game, but has a nice touch from the outside. He's got five, and it's a two-point contest, 27-25. Just under nine to go in the first half. It's been close throughout. IPFW had a 16-7 lead at one point, but 11-2 run by Southern Indiana. Closed it, tied it at 18. Fonestock on the bounce, looking for Burkhart. Knocked out of bounds by Doyle. Good look by Fonestock to see Burkhart when Jones came over on the switch. The hell got knocked out of bounds. 
Scott Taylor, number 42, coming in for Jeff Doyle. Spana stock. Marsnick going to reset. 10 on the shot clock. Land Bullard back in the contest as well. There is a bailout. Fauna stock off his hands. Three on two. Jewer going to the glass. Gerard is his name. I will try and get that right. Eight points for Gerard. 27 all. 8.16 to go. Good idea that time. Bullard spotting up for the three. Fonestock could not get him the ball in time, though, just a split second late. Fonestock now going to have a seat. Leo Watkins back in. Chris Bowles in as well. Bowles, good defense on the out of bounds play. That 6 10 frame in front of Gibson. Couldn't get the ball over him. Tough play when you can't move along that baseline. Knocked away. Watkins has a hand on it. Still loose. Picked up by Juard. This is take on a reset. 18 on the clock. Bowles does not operate down on the block. They're keeping him on the wing tonight. It's time they wanted a two-man game there. Good defense by Smithy. Great defense that time. They wanted to swing it back to Bowles. Late call there by the official as Tate threw it back in bounds. He said he stepped on the line. Tate a little upset about the call. 27-27, a crucial stop there. IPFW with possession. This is Marcinic. Marsnick on the defense, not Smithy. Burkhardt double team. Bullard looking to get it back to him. Going to swing it out. Bullard thinking, yes. Long board out. Gibson controls. Good tap out by Jason Burkhardt on the long rebound. Bullard now forcing his shot, trying to get into the action. He has but two points on three free throw attempts. Still tied at 27. Bulls working down inside, and Bullard with the help side defense. Good look that time. Bulls finally going inside, I think. Posting up, had good position. They lofted it over, and Bullard with good help to knock it out of bounds. A couple of new players in for IPFW. Greg Arrington, the first time he's been in the contest. Number 10. And immediately with the steal. It's a way to come in. Scott Simmons back in to Bob from the outside. Spotting with the own follow. Good look this time. Arrington, can he do it both ends? Doesn't get it to go. Badly off. And Tate now controlling. Bruce Pearl all the way almost out of the coaching box. Yelling at his team. They are really swinging the ball around. Aaron did listed at 6-3, and they're guarding 6-10 Chris Bulls. Could be a little matchup problem right there. <laughs> Do you think maybe Bruce Pearl was saying, get the ball to Bulls? <laughs> this is Arrington on the break, going right at Gerard. Bulls with the board, Watkins with a foul. Team foul number seven, one and one down at the other end. Bulls will go to the line with a one and a one. Well, both teams, Eric, in a stretch right now where neither has scored for the last two plus minutes. A couple turnovers, some good defense as well. Have to feel right now if someone can get out to a five point lead, they might be able to ride that well deep into the second half. Boy, great job that time. Watkins falling down. Simmons, possibly with a cherry pick, turns into a pass back to himself after it hits Harrington. Follow that time, Watkins. Good position by Hello Watkins that time to get the tip with Bulls right behind him. Bulls helping bring the ball to the floor again. Five and a half to go, 29-27, IPFW. This is Bulls. 
Might have gotten hit on the arm that time by Watkins. Marsnick rather looking to push. Gonna reset now. Watkins is really the only low post threat. They put Arrington down there on the block. Arrington a slight height advantage against Tate. I don't know if we'll see Greg much on the post though. Trying to work that flex down underneath. We have a foul call. That might be on Juard. If it is, that is number three. Indeed, number three on him. IPFW will be going to the foul line. Juard, since turning that ankle, he has eight points. He has six since flipping the ankle. Gibson with a cut across the lane. Juard tried to step in front as Gibson made the move. I think he got called for the hole. Good job, Watkins. Getting some slap now as he comes out. Solid performance. Watkins with four points. Quality minutes down underneath. Scott Bonestock back in the game, number 24 IPFW. And Gibson on the line, one and one. Nice little stroke there by Shane to give him eight points for the contest. IPFW a 30 to 27 lead. Todd Jones back in the game, number 40. And a push underneath. I believe going against Chris Bowles. Boy, Shane Gibson. What a competitor. Well, I didn't catch that. We get that one up on replay. That is a critical call. That is number three on Chris Bowles. Boy, just working out the way Coach Piazza wanted it to. Three fouls on the top two players. Bowles coming in at almost 20 a game. Bowles, Bowles 22. Bowles guarded by the shorter Gibson. Tried to get position. Shane, strong player inside. Wouldn't let Bowles have it. He picked up the foul. I beg your pardon. That is only one on Bowles. So he is not in any type of foul trouble whatsoever. 504 left here in the first half. Shane Gibson having trouble with that second free throw on both trips to the line. This is Tate now pushing. Tyrone Tate, seven for him. Cuts the lead back down to two, 31-29. And IPFW just never in sync that time down. Simmons fumbles and then Marsnick out of bounds. Seventh turnover for IPFW. This is Jones now. Martin takes a charge underneath, not call. Taylor, now this is Tate. Over to Martin. Inside, Bowles, alley oop, bad pass. Good defense applied there by the 6 1 Scott Simmons. On Chris Bowles stopping the alley you play. I don't think that was by design, Eric. <laughs> I think when you're 16, you can improvise a little bit. Well, there's a lot of football going on down there. Arrington with a bad pass there, trying to go all the way across court, and Bowles got a hand on it. Forward kick was cleared to take, wipe that one off. Foul on Marsnick beforehand, one and one. Looked like Marsnick has a bloody nose down there. I believe him and Tate hit heads as Tate made the drive. He's checking it right now to see if he has any blood. Tate with a chance to tie this up. Neil Coyle coming back in the rotation. Todd Jones having his seat. Last two trips down, Tyrone Tate just take Marsnick right to the hole. Hit the shot both times. Got the foul this time. As we mentioned, Tate goes 6-1. Has the speed, although Marsnick is a fast player, has the speed to beat him off the dribble. Number Tate misses. Still a two point lead for IPFW. In the bounce that time, Arrington, and what a stupid foul that was. The foul called all the way across the floor by the ref closest to us. There was a ref right next to the play where Arrington was shooting. Didn't make the call. That's right, the ref opposite. The play made the call. The official behind the play did not call it. 
I'm not sure, uh, Eric, whether or not that official is making sure the three, that official closest is making sure that's a three, and the other one is watching for that. But we do have three officials in college basketball at the Division II level, and it certainly makes a difference. Watch CBA games and watch two officials, two officials rather, struggle with the pace of that game. It certainly isn't advantageous to have those three pairs of eyes out there. Well, Arrington misses the first, has two more. And Arrington misses the second. Comes into the night averaging only 52% from the foul line. And that has gone down. Gets the last. It's a three-point lead now. 32-29. 4.08 to go here in the first half. Another block there on Marson. He couldn't move the feet fast enough to cut off their own Tate over here on the sideline. Shot at the Southern Indiana bench. They are number 14 in the Division II poll. Coming into tonight's contest, 5-0. One game in front. The Great Lakes Valley Conference. Vonestock with the board. Tate misses his second consecutive one and one. Marcinek having trouble with the defensive team. Finally gets rid of it. This is Fonestock. 18 on the clock. Tate. Down we have a switch. Marcinek open three. And Bowles pulls down the board. Ripped away. Arrington reverse. Good steal by Greg Arrington there. Bowles looking for the outlet. Came from behind and got the layup. Back door by Arrington. Layup 34-29. IPFW bowls the other way. Nice little alley oop there. Eric, I really Greg Martin. I really believe they could do that all night with bowls if they wanted to. It's 6 10. Just lob it into him, work it into him, and then spring him back outside. He closes it to a three point lead. Seven for Chris Bowles. This is Fonestock working on him. Baby hook doesn't go. Cleared out of there by Neil Coyle. Doyle up ahead, misses. Bulls there to clean up, can't get it to go. Doyle foul by Fonestock. And boy, that might be a technical. Doyle hit the ball. Now they're going to let that one go as I think they should. A little frustration there by Doyle, missing a couple in close. Alon Fonestock, his second. Jeff Doyle will have two. One shot. Scott Taylor getting set to check in for Doyle. Brian Hubner also getting set to check in. Oh, Hubner is going to check in. He hits both. It's now a one-point lead for IBFW, 34-33. 2.52 to go in the first half. Good hustle there by Huebner as he went over the chain down there at the end of the floor and almost right out through the doors into that 30 below weather. With shorts on, I don't believe that was... <laughs> Intentional by him, good hustle nevertheless. 31 on the clock though, IPFW looking at Gibson down low. He's working inside. Bowles almost tipped that one in. Might have been offensive goaltending. That called. Andy Piazza, IPFW coach, up in the face. What a turnaround that time. Martin comes back and strokes the three. Greg Martin now with five, and it's a two-point 36-34 lead. Buller trying to answer and is fouled. Chris Bowles playing international rules. I think took it off the rim right there. Boy, if we Shane Gibson made a little baseline move. If we could get that replay up, it looked like that ball was still hanging around on the rim. Andy Piazza asking about the call. Andy in his sixth year at IPFW. They might be giving him a little longer leash on that call. Did appear to be our vantage point up top here, goaltending. Bullard finally getting back in the books after two early free throws. 
in the game's first two minutes. And as you stated before, Bullard player of the week last week in the GLVs, he averaging nearly 30 points a game. They're going to need his outside shot. He now has four, ties the game back up at 36. Just under two and a half to go here in the first half. This is Craig Martin now with the ball being deed up. George with the fake, back to Martin for another three. And what is this? I haven't seen this many fouls called after the shot. Scott Simmons commits IPFW's, I believe, third foul on a three-point shot. It's at least two. I'll have to go back and check that one out. And we've had two down at the other end when IPFW has attempted a three-point shot. So Barton will have three shots and a chance put the Screaming Eagles. As good of a three-point shooter as Craig Martin is, I know Coach Piazza doesn't want to put him in the line for three free ones. Well, he doesn't go to the line that often. He's only six of eight coming into tonight's contest. And he hits all three. It's a 39-36 ball game. Quickly, this is Bullard spotting, using glass, and no. Yes. Bonestag, rebound follow. Scott Bonestag with the rebound and the quick jumper up over Bowles over Land Bullard's off-balance jumper, I'd say. A little out of control. Land was a bit out of control. Had an open look, though. This is George, or Tate, rather. Tyrone Tate, I want to call him Tate George, but Tyrone Tate going to the line. This team foul number 10, two shots now for Tate. Don't know if he's quite the player, Tate George. Uh, not quite. <laughs> not quite Tate George, Connecticut player. A quick foul on Jeff Jackson there. Jackson a little bigger than Marsnick, stands about six foot. I don't know if he's quite as quick as Tate. Though. Tate has really shown his quickness. Has 10 or so possessions down the floor, beating the defense and beating his man off the bounce. Misses the second. Bowles comes out of there with the board, decides he's going to put it on the floor. Bad decision. Jackson now on the push. Good steal by Jackson when the big man Bowles put it on the floor. 40 to 38. A minute and a half to go. This is Jeff Jackson. Now over to Gibson. They're trying to break somebody loose down free. Bonestock trying to post up Bowles. 15 on the clock. Bonestock breaking loose. Bowles with a block. Big block from Chris Bowles. Bonestock beat him across the lane. Had no idea where he was. Put the shot up. Bowles knocked it in the 15th row. Got to believe that when you hear the big man coming, stay on the ground. Give him a head fake. Going to have a foul on Southern Indiana. It's going to be two shots. Let's pick it up. The referee see who's going to the line to shoot. I believe it's going to be Simmons. No, it's Gibson. Doyle with the foul. Push, I believe, as Gibson tried to break free. An inbounds pass. Well, he has this down. He hits the first. That's the third time he's hit. First attempt. Now Gibson has the second coming to tie the game at 40. He does. 121, knotted at 40. It's been a good one. IPFW has not gone away. Took a big lead early on, 16 to 7. Survived a mini run by the Screaming Eagles. He's sticking around now, the turnover. Jackson hustling to get it. He does. Has Arrington if he sees him. Gibson filling. No. Bonestock board. Yes. No. That one in and out. Gibson with a follow. Foul, no call. Funnestock still battling. Tate trying to make him pay the other way. Bowles on the block and a foul. Nine for Bowles, a chance to put the lead back up to three. Bonestock that time as Bulls hit the layup. Not too sure about that one, Paul. It looked to me from here that Bonestock was behind Bulls. A little anticipatory call there by the referee. 
all the action down at the other end. I didn't think uh, that contact was warning a, a free throw. Nevertheless, 43-40, 40 seconds to go. Southern Indiana, no look that time. Simmons thrown away. Burkhart did not go to the glass. Simmons thinking Burkhart was going to cut to the basket for the easy layup. Burkhart was popping out for the short jumper. A little mix up. Burkhart getting more and more playing time as the season wears on. But IPFW definitely showing better chemistry these last few games. Bulls filling the lane. Did he walk? The quick foul called that time by the ref, I believe, on Burkhardt, as soon as Bulls caught the ball. They're going to count the bucket. That's 45 40 the count. Shane Gibson got to come back in. He's been the linchpin down there on the interior defense. Burkhardt coming out. The foul called on Scott Simmons, I believe, from behind on the push. Simmons does pick up the foul. That would explain that. His second. And Bulls now. Two three-point plays back-to-back, 46-40. -back, to 40. Jeff Smithy and Scott Simmons coming out. Simmons, a rough first half after a great first half the last time. Baseball pass. Center fielder that time. Bowles steals it away. Bonstock was wide open. Bowles at half court. Shane Gibson just couldn't get enough arm to him. No shot clock now. 19 left on the big clock. 46-40 Southern Indiana with a little run here of their own. Six-nothing run. Ten on the clock. What do we have here? A hold by Jackson. He doesn't like the call. I don't know if any player would like a call or a foul's called on them, but he picks up number two. Tate, 4-2. Tate has not been effective from the free throw line. Normally an 83% shooter. He's missed two free throws tonight already. Tate now with a second chance to take it to eight point. 48, 40 lead, misses though. Inside, that's Coyle with a rebound bucket. Four for Coyle, just two seconds left on the clock. And Smithy can't get it off. A 9-0 run here late. Southern Indiana running into the locker room. 49-40, your halftime score. And what started off so well just fell apart in that last minute and a half for IPFW. Tyrone Tate with nine, Chris Bowles with 13, came alive there in the late part of the first half. Back-to-back -back three pointers, the old-fashioned way by Bowles really hurt. Stretched the lead out to six, and that rebound basket, 49-40. You see it there, halftime. We're going to take a timeout right now. Halftime show coming your way, 49-40, Southern Indiana in the front.
Die Welt verändert sich sehr schnell. De plus en plus, nous deviendrons tous partie d'une communauté internationale. Tout le monde aura une opportunité pour former partie de ce changement. If there is a common language in the world today, that language would be change. Sometimes evident, sometimes hidden, it is nonetheless constant. And when viewed through the eyes of the world, this change can be wide, sweeping, immediate, and profound. Yet when viewed through a different set of eyes, through the eyes of a child, this change can be personal, and at times bewildering. Consider a child from another land whose family has come to Indiana, brought by an international company or organization to America's heartland. For this child, a changing world is felt at a personal level, a level of new language, atmosphere, customs, and new friends. There are more and more children like this one throughout the communities of Indiana. And part of the promise of the years ahead is that there will be many more. The coming international era, it has been called an era in which local economies, institutions, and industries arrive, merge and interrelate to an extent far greater than ever before. It will be an era when Indiana's place in the world may depend upon the ability to remain open to the world around us and adjust our ways of thinking and acting. Recently, a group of citizens from around the state, representing many walks of life, came together to form the International Issues Task Force. A group formed with the purpose of determining and enhancing Indiana's ability to thrive in an increasingly international environment and prepare recommendations for the future. In part, the task force considered issues related to the Indiana business community, but their scope extended much further. Because at the heart of all changes are people. And closest to people are basic human issues. Issues that directly affect our ability to work and participate in an increasingly international atmosphere. With this in mind, the task force identified four primary areas of investigation. An international school, international service organizations and communications, international transportation, and international education. Each topic was studied by a separate committee, with ongoing staff support and administration provided by the Indiana Humanities Council. The intent of each committee was to determine how to best prepare the people of Indiana to become more valuable and productive citizens of the world community. The International School Committee investigated the feasibility of establishing an international school in Indiana a school which would serve the needs of Indiana children by creating the opportunity to learn in a unique, world-class educational environment. A school which would also serve the needs of the children of foreign business people, students, educators, researchers, and other visitors to Indiana. As the business of many Indiana companies becomes increasingly global, the need for an international school becomes ever greater because at the center of the needs of any family is the education of the children. Another task force committee investigated the statewide delivery of international services and information. 
Indiana is home to many different international service organizations. Yet a study commissioned by the Lilly Endowment revealed a need for these organizations to work more closely together. The task force committee investigated the needs of international employees and their families, foreign students, researchers, and the professional spouses of international executives to determine if services were readily available to international families. For example, foreign families often need special assistance in adapting to their new environment, obtaining driving licenses, learning where and how to meet American friends as well as other foreigners, and generally learning about a new culture. The committee also investigated ways to raise the consciousness of the people of Indiana by providing opportunities for exposure to international cultures through these service organizations. The committee then explored ways to best coordinate, fund, and deliver these needed services to international families as well as Indiana citizens. Central to Indiana's ability to be a vital part of a changing world is transportation. And a task force committee was formed to investigate the possibilities for increasing direct air transportation from Indianapolis International Airport to overseas cities and markets. Many Indiana companies, as well as international business people and visitors living in Indiana, currently need direct air service overseas. The committee not only studied this issue, it developed a strategy for pursuing greater levels of service. International transportation, an important way to more directly link Indiana with the world. The mission of the first three committees was investigating ways to make Indiana even more hospitable to foreign visitors, executives, employees, and families. The fourth committee investigated ways of preparing the youth of Indiana for the international era by studying the present educational system. The committee evaluated the teaching of world geography and culture, world history, foreign literature, and foreign language in an effort to assure that Indiana students are provided with the knowledge and the skills to succeed in the international era. In many ways, the intent of the task force has been to provide a cornerstone, a cornerstone from which the state can begin to build and prepare for the future. A future that is rapidly approaching for businesses, for organizations, for families, and for all of us. It is up to us to shape our place in the international era by learning the language of the world, the language of change. The International Issues Task Force has provided an important first step for the people of Indiana, a step toward becoming citizens of the world and making countrymen of all humankind. Excuse me, could you help me, please? Sir, could you help me, please? My little girl, she needs blood. Could you help me? I'm sorry. Somebody, somebody, please? My daughter, she needs blood. Could you please help? Somebody, somebody, help me. Imagine if you had to ask for blood to save the life of someone you love. Next time the American Red Cross asks, give blood, please. This is the increasingly competitive world we live in, and this is the country we want ahead of the company. 
These are the people we'll be depending on to keep this country ahead of the competition. These are the colleges and universities we're relying on for the people we're depending on to keep this country ahead of the competition. So if you want America to stay number one in the world, do something about it. Give to the college of your choice. What comes to your mind when you think about statistics? Polls? Gambling? Maybe baseball? Sure, but how about lightning? Lobsters? Music? Chocolate cake? Sex discrimination? Heart attacks? Potato chips? Traffic? The ozone layer? Shakespeare? Monkeys? Dancing? Drug testing? If some of these things didn't make your list, then you should be watching Public Television's new statistics series, Against All Odds. Sports Center, Paul Farbaugh joined by Eric Agnew tonight. Halftime of IPFW basketball. There in the short end of a 49-40 score, Southern Indiana with nine straight points in the last minute and a half to take that lead. The stats that glare at you, Eric, when you look down the stat sheets, so IPFW 2 of 11 from the three-point, uh, beyond the three-point line. Certainly a different uh, story Thursday against Kentucky Wesleyan. Yeah, against Kentucky Wesleyan, Paul, they came out there with 13 for 23. Not shooting quite as effective tonight. And overall, they're only hitting, uh, uh, the Dons are only hitting 40% for the game. Southern Indiana, 58%. And that offsets their 15 turnovers, the leading scores we mentioned uh, before we went off the break there. Chris Bowles with 13 for Southern Indiana. Stan Guard picked up three early fouls. He has eight. He'll be returning in the second half. Tyrone Tate with nine. Craig Martin with eight as well and a couple of threes. Todd Jones, five. Neil Coyle, four. For IPFW, Shane Gibson has been the man on the defensive end uh, for most of the last three games, providing good interior defense tonight. He's backing it up with some offense as well. Shane Gibson playing good inside. Right now, leading the Dons with four rebounds in the first half. Don's getting out rebounded 15 to 23. The big number here of the defensive boards. USI out rebounded them 14 to 5. 14 to 5, a 23 15 advantage, as you mentioned there. Gibson has 13 points, and then the rest of the team, well, you have balanced scoring, but everybody else only has four, three, and two points. Bullard with four. Haven't heard much from him. He has all his four points on free throws. Jason Burkhart with a bucket, Russ Marcinick, three pointer. Scott Simmons with four points. Great, uh, Greg Arrington with three. Fonis Stock with four. He's got to pick it up in the second half. Aaliyah Watkins for Jermaine Williams with three. Haven't heard much from Land Bullard or Scott Simmons, the leaders in the last couple of games. Both with four right now. Bullard, 0 for 6 from the field right now. He's got to get on track, and that would be part of the, the prescription that Andy Piazza would hope to tell his team to cure this nine-point deficit right now, but what else does IPFW have to do, Eric, to get back in this contest? Down by nine, they're not the type of team that will come back on you if they get down by 15 or 20. They could. What they need, Paul, is a run in the second half. They need to try to shut down Bowles a little more. They did good in the early part of the game, doubling down on Chris Bowles. He was outside a lot towards the end of the first half. He went inside, scored 10 or 11 points towards the end of the first half. Shane Gibson doing a good job. I think someone we need to see in there, KC Runyon, a sophomore out of Fairmont, hasn't seen any action tonight. He can go inside, 6'6", six, six, sophomore, shoot to three, he can play good defense, hasn't seen much action. Well, yeah, let's get down to the, to the floor here in the starting lineups. Russ Marcinick now working with the ball. Shane Gibson, 24, Halil Watkins, 41, Scott Simmons, 23. Land Bullard, number 40, getting the start for IPFW in the second half. will pick up Southern Indiana down on their offensive end. Leo Watkins working on Bulls and automatically turns and shuffles the feet. Bulls, as we mentioned earlier, an All-American Division II center from last year, 6'10". 11th turnover for IPFW and Stan Juard. Just as he did in the first half, Paul gets off to a quick start hitting the first bucket of the second half for USI. IPFW was able to stick around with Southern Indiana because Juar, 22 points a game, was not in there. Gibson picking up the block. Hillel Watkins gets the start in the second half. 
instead of Jason Burkhart, Watkins, maybe a little stronger, a little quicker, about the same size. 51-42 count now. This is tight. Working in, gets his own board. Tyrone Tate got to bring it back out. He had nine first half points. Took the drive against the smaller Marcinic and got his own rebound. This is Brian Hubner. Doesn't go over the back. Not called. Jeff Doyle with the rebound bucket. Jeff Doyle there again had the size advantage on Simmons to get the rebound in the bucket. Jeff Doyle, number 32. Stan Juard, number 25. Chris Bowles, number 30. Brian FW Huber, now number three. Trailing by 11 now. Needs to get back into it. Watkins, that's the way to beat the press, but he hesitated. Hubner comes down with a block. And the poor shooting woes continue for IPFW. Juard, however, travels. Got the steps called down here at the other end. Hebner showing good ups down here, blocking. A little Watkins shot after the good pump fake. This is Simmons ahead, has the numbers three on two. Simmons going to the hole, Watkins free, yes. Good look by Scott Simmons to see Hillel Watkins under the basket wide open. Well, perhaps putting the press on will translate into more movement on the offense. 53-44, Southern Indiana. Just two minutes into the second half here. Kick by Gibson, not called, but it will be off him, out of bounds. Twenty on the shot clock. Good defense there by Shane Gibson, getting a hand on the ball and knocking him out of bounds. Now USI has to reset with only 20 seconds. Over the top that time, Watkins helping out. And Juart saved that. That would have been off Simmons. Instead, it is turnover number 17 for Southern Indiana. Second in the second half. Still a nine-point lead for Southern Indiana. The same at halftime. Simmons with a giveaway. This is Tyrone Tate, three on two. Simmons is back. Bowles, however, wide open. Gibson did not cover. Thought we were going to see a little showtime there. Bowles could have taken up for the dunk. Elected to do the safer layup. I'll be honest with you, Eric. I don't see him. There's a Seattle scout in the stands. I don't see Bowles as being NBA material. Watkins can't get it to go. Foul on Huebner. I think you're right, Paul. Bowles isn't showing a lot tonight. He's got 15, I believe. Six foot ten. He's doing good against our team, but Lord knows we're no NBA squad for Bowles to be contending with. No, Division Two there. There are some players that come out of Division Two. Scotty Pippen was actually a Division Three player. As well as a guy up in Portland runs the point up there. And as you can tell, Chris Bowles is no Scotty Pippen coming from Central Arkansas. No, Watkins gets the second, cut it to 10. Watkins with three here in the second half. Quickly down the other end, Watkins gets the block. Don't know if I agree with that call, Paul. Hello, look, hello Watkins looked pretty set to me as Hebner drove to the basket. Two, three on Watkins. First team foul for IVFW in the second half. 55 45, 17 23 to go. Watkins picks up another one. And that's the second time he's tried to outleap Juard. Going for the ball. Watkins had no idea where Juard was. Picks up his fourth. Well, Williams coming in now. Watkins coming out. Three points. Seven overall. Fresh shot clock. This is Bulls on the outside. Tate now with the ball. Southern going to run some clock, work the offense. Bulls looking for Taylor, 42. Scott Taylor on the inside. Bullard with a help. Taylor slicing through. Doesn't get it to go. Bulls with a follow. No. They're going to give that to. I think they're going to credit Bowles with the bucket. Bowles got the second tip to go that time. 17 for Bowles. Simmons trying to beat him off the bounce. Can't go. Tate out of there with the board. 57 45. Careful for IPFW not to get blown out right here. Hubner with a lay in bucket. 
It might start getting out of control here, Paul. Andy Piazza might need to get a timeout to settle his team down. 14 points, Simmons again on the press. Pull up, jumper, no. Simmons cannot find the range tonight. And Williams knocks the ball out of bounds. Timeout, Andy Piazza, 59-45. IPFW gonna take some time to talk it over. A little run right now by Southern Indiana to stretch it out. They've outscored IPFW. 10 to five in this second half here. I want to let you know about this, take care of a little business while we're at the timeout. Channel six is now accepting applications for underwriting the televising of IPFW sports events and other programs. For more information about how your business or organization can utilize this opportunity, call the channel six office during business hours at 481-6000. And if you want some exposure at a good price, this would be a good place to start. IPFW, there's probably about 500 fans out on hand tonight. Very, very cold weather, Eric. Uh, and it's going to be packed next weekend. IPFW, the men's volley dons, come back home. They're up in Canada right now. Three-game swing up there against the top Canadian teams. Friday night, get out here early. Ohio State, UCLA in a Final Four matchup from last year. Ohio State going to be the main obstacle for IPFW to get back to the Final Four. Saturday night, IPFW UCLA. As we said before, Paul, Chris Bowles not playing up to NBA form exactly. He's got 17 right now, but I would really like to see the scout's notes as to what he thinks of the Division II center. Well, the scout has put down, as we look across the way, put down the notepad. <laughs> Working on a hot dog over there, so he might have the book closed on him. Todd Jones in the game, uh, the game now, number 40. It's Hubner. Juard with a bad pass, another turnover from him. His second of the half. Third for Southern Indiana, 18 overall, 59-45. Well, IPFW needs a momentum breaker, get the turnover, see if they can convert on the offensive end. Russ Marsnick, another player we could see in the contest later in the half. Paul Jeff Smithy, a senior out of Indianapolis. It's seven three pointers in a game. It's Madonna. Can light it up from the outside at a 42% clip. From three point range. Now 14 on the clock. Marsnick looking to get somebody free. This is Arrington. He has to change his the shot. Fonestock working hard. Arrington and Fonestock both hands on the ball, and Williams can't get the follow. Williams with a quick shot, got the ball on the bounce, just fell right into his hands and went up and drew the foul. And you see Bruce Pearl there. As you mentioned, longtime assistant to Tom Davis out at Iowa. Dr. Tom Davis. Dr. Tom Davis, yes. Whatever he has his doctorate in, I believe it is phys ed. So uh, take that for what it's worth. But Pearl is uh, in his second year of the program, Great Lakes Valley Coach of the Year last year. Took over a good Southern Indiana program, and uh, Andy Piazza was interested in the head coaching position, but finally he turned it down, reevaluated his position here, decided he was going to stick around at IPFW. It's been a tough start for him, though. Five and seven, Southern Indiana, 10 and one. This is Tate now going baseline. Use Fonestock. Fonestock comes up with the board. Now this is Marsnick looking to go deep into the hole. I believe he picked the foul on Jones. No one came over to stop Marsnick on the drive, so he decided to take it all the way to the hole. Well, IPFW is getting the stops, but they are not getting the points at the other end. And this is uh, a time when they have to put something on the board. 14-point lead. You can't afford to fall behind a team like Southern Indiana by 20 points. You're just not going to be able to come back. Not able to convert on the offensive end. Shane Gibson really the only scorer in the game right now. Scott Fonestock also averaging 12. Hasn't been able to get on the board tonight in a big way. He's got four. Well, we've seen that before. Scott Fonestock came back with a big second half against Kentucky Wesleyan for 12 points. As Marsnick hits the second, 59-47 lead. Might have gotten the turnover there. Fonestock can't come up with it. And Southern Indiana gonna run the offense in a lot of clock. 
spreading it out now. This is Stan Juard. Craig Martin now, Smith and guarding him. Martin just backing down, missing badly. Juar comes out of there with a board and a fresh 35. Ronnie Combs, number 24, into the contest now for Southern Indiana. Scott Taylor, 42, now with the ball. Still 20 on the clock. Juar splits the defenders. Gibson, however, strips him clean. Big turnover there. Now Fonestock trying to convert at the other end. Combs with a rip and a foul. He got Ronnie right. Combs. Scott Fonestock on a good move to the hole. Brought it down around his knees. At knees and able the smaller Combs to get a hand in there through the foul. Boy, it looked like he got a lot of ball on that, too. Didn't see much contact with the wrist. But Fonestock will have two coming. The senior. Can cut the lead to 10 with this free throw here. He does. Fonestock with six. First two in the second half. It's a 59 49 lead. IVFW on a 4 0 run. Bowles, Bowles back in the game. Tyrone Tate sits down, takes the rest, gives us a little better matchup between Marcinick and and Ronnie Combs. Maybe look for IPFW to work it outside, and that's why that's why the turnover is there. Tate's out of the game. You've got a big man up top, Neil Coyle making the pass. Six seven Neil Coyle. And a blocking foul. Scott Taylor's fourth. Taylor is not a big loss. He averages seven points for Southern Indiana. Has not entered the scoring books tonight. It is his fourth. Team foul number five and a bad pass there by Fonestock. Turns it right back over. Combs and Williams with a hammer. Fonestock that time got a little mixed up on the inbounds play, and that is a very costly turnover. A big foul by Williams Combs with the pump fake. As we saw the end of the replay right there, got Williams up in the air, good jumper, and just came down right on top of him. Williams hit him so hard, and he knocked the transmission out there, but Combs surviving, hits the first. He's now in the books with his first point of the evening. IPFW chance to get it to single digits. But a big turnover. Now it's back up to 12, 61-49. Smithy double teamed at the baseline. And boy, that's a poor decision by Fonestock to inbound it there and let Smithy, or Marcinek, my fault. Marcinek, number 21, Russ Marcinek. Marcinek be double teamed. Trapped long. again, threw it off the knee of a USI player to get out of the trap. Good defense applied by USI. Boy, Ronnie Combs all over Marcinek that time. Nelson over Marsnick. The sixth foul on USI, one more IPFW in the bonus, which is good for IPFW. Put them at the line and get them to three points. Two on one, Arrington with a good look and go. Williams with a follow. Get that one to Williams. Monastock was there with the recovery. Williams with a good tip, I believe, over Chris Bolt. 61 51. IPFW now scrambling man to man. Martin with a big three. His second of the game, back out to 13. Biggest lead of the game, I shouldn't say back. That is the biggest lead of the game. Williams going against Bowles, misses inside. Bowles with the rebound. Williams took it inside, just trying to use his brute strength. He's so strong, Paul. I Mark. believe he could go up against Bowles. Well, they do need to be a little more aggressive at both ends, especially on the glass down here at the defensive end. Badly out-rebounded. Well, the defensive boards in the first half, IPFW was. Now Southern Indiana, 10 on the clock. Ronnie Combs going to set the offense. Down to seven. Coyle down inside. Push called on Williams. 
check the call here. It is indeed on Williams. I have him for two, so that would be his third foul. Oh, they make that team foul number four. They change it on the board. Williams fourth as well. Boy, foul trouble now for IPFW. Watkins with four. Williams with four. And Scott I've, Simmons coming in. They're going small. IPFW loses size by bringing in the guard Simmons with a three-guard lineup now. Hello, no one picked up Combs on the outside. Big middle error that time, 16-point lead, 67-51. Careful now for a blowout. There's a steal by Martin. Through the fake, took it right to Shane Gibson. Shane determined to get the block. A little aggravated with his team's play right now as the senior, and picked up the foul. Coach Biazza knows this position now quite dangerous, a 16-point lead. Timeout, IPFW 67-51. Coach Andy Piazza could not allow this one to get any worse right now, trying to stop the bleeding. Tough stretch there for IPFW. They have a chance to get back down to this single digits and a turnover, a mix up between Funnestock the out of bounds play. And all of a sudden it's a 16 point lead. Uh, we are uh, pleased to be able to bring you cable casts of NCAA athletic competition. We want to thank uh, volunteers right now who put forth an effort free of charge out here to bring you the action. Some of the fans we mentioned earlier here are pretty good, uh, pretty good crowd in here. Put it upwards of about 500, might be a little generous, but on a night like this here, good crowd. 30 below temperatures outside, 40 below, and a good turnout, maybe partially due to the victory against Kentucky Wesleyan. The public waking up a little bit, wanting to come out on this nice, cool Saturday night to see the Mastodons play. Well, uh, Southern Indiana scoring from six different players here in the second half. Ronnie Combs coming in off the bench has five in the second half. Stroke to three as well as Craig Martin hit a three. Martin now at the line for two free throws. And ever since that last minute and a half, Shane Gibson took a little time on the bench and Bulls got loose underneath for a couple of three point plays. Southern Indiana has been taking control. One to two for Martin. It's now 68-51. Gibson loses control, saved by Simmons. Gibson still down as well as Combs. 20 on the clock, Fonestock looking for Gibson. Shane Gibson. Gibson limping around after the contact with Combs. Fonstock tried to gain the ball and he couldn't hold on. I believe Shane had come out now. Now some pressure from IPFW. This is Marsnick. Diamond press. Twelve minutes to go, 68-51. What appeared to be a close game throughout the first half is now apparently got the look of a route on. This is Martin with the ball. Southern Indiana working clock. Bowles can't hit the three. Six on the clock. This is Combs behind the back. Neil Coyle misses. Bowles with a follow. And that's as, aggress as aggressive as we have seen him tonight. Bruce Pearl, happy to see the big man going strong to the orange. Bruce Pearl up off the bench, jumping in the air with enthusiasm as Bowles went to the boards hard off the miss and got the foul. You mentioned Bowles, an All-American, second-team All-American by the Basketball Times. 
made uh, Division II. Uh, Great Lakes Valley. Runner up, uh, runner up to our own Sean Gibson for GLBC Player of the Year honors last year. And pulls down the board at the other end. It's 69 51. Harrington clears the board. Well, the three would do a lot of good right now. Marshnick retains possession. Shot clock still running down to 20. This is Simmons out to Marshnick. Going to reset now. There's just not a lot of scoring punch. Gibson making his way back to the bench. Arrington trying to air it out for a three. Goes down inside. Challenge bowl. Silly decision, but works it again. Bowles got the block right back in Arrington's hands. He went up for the layup. Bowles wasn't expecting it. Got a lot of second bounce in Arrington's legs. Bowles couldn't get back up that quickly. Misses and now over the back. Watkins. Four fouls. Holding ground down underneath. Both team foul, uh, both uh, teams now with six team fouls. That makes it seven on Southern Indiana. And Bowles is really gassed at this point. Leo Watkins will go to the line. Bowles is coming out. Stan Juar coming out. That time just good box out by Watkins there. Held his ground. He has four fouls. Knew he couldn't do anything but stand there, put the arm straight up. USI up by 16. Players a little tired. Pearl brings in a whole new squad, a whole new five as Alel Watkins goes to the line. But he has three starters in there. Number 25, Stan Juard. Number three, Brian Hubner. Number 11, Tyrone Tate. Watkins hits the first. He has four points in the second half, eight overall. Jeff Jackson into the lane early. Takes the free throw away from Watkins. Southern Indiana able to beat that press over the top. Hubner wide open. And IPFW small can't afford the board or can't afford to get the foul there. Uh, Watkins forces the turnover. Watkins wide open at the other end of the floor. No one paying attention. This but time. IPFW breaks the press. Watkins holding his breath there. Todd Jones picks up the foul, his third. Watkins back on the free throw line, eighth team foul. Good time for Lamb Bullard to look for his shot out behind three point land. That time they were setting up an ISO for him, leaving the one side of the court wide open for him to operate. <laughs> Watkins with the kiss. With the kiss. And he just shook his head. I don't know if he was just stretching his neck muscles or going. <laughs> Did he call bank? He called a. Uh, I don't know, but we'll give it to him tonight. <laughs> Banks are open on Saturdays. <laughs> Cuts the lead down to uh, 14, rather. I'm like trying to get my voice back after that. In horse, that would be a great shot. 14 point lead. Juard, he is gone. I believe that's number five on him. Well, I'll tell you, 10 03 left. If IPFW could stay away from the fouls and just start going to the line because they're not doing it from the outside, they have a chance to rack up some points. Jeff Jackson going to the line. That is 19 fouls on Southern Indiana. Juard's fourth, and Bowles checks back in. That's right, that is Juard's fourth. Trying to jump the gun and help IPFW any way we can up here. This is still a one and one. Good Simmons with a great tip from Bullard. Chance to knock this lead down to 12, 11 with a three-pointer. Watkins aggressively off the glass. 
That was a little better bank shot that time, Paul. Uh, I think he learned from that free throw. And the turnover. Hubner falling down. Simmons beating the defense has Tate. Bullard the full length floor pass to Scott Simmons for the layup. May have been a foul there. Simmons hit the deck pretty hard. 59-69, a 10-point lead for Southern Indiana. IPFW climbing back in this one. Maybe going on a little mini run. It was 18 points at one time. 61 or 69, 51. Here's Martin free. Bullard's not going to give him the free one. Bullard had the block, but came in aggressive, took him out with the body. Martin will go to the line for two. That time Bullard eight, helping out on the help side defense there a little late, so he figured he's just going to hammer him and make him, make Martin earn him from the free throw line. Another look at that. Bonnestock jumping out on the man, beaten badly. Forces Bullard there to cover. Craig Martin, 75% free throw shooter, gets them both. 71 59, 12 point lead. IPFW showing some signs of life here. Here's Simmons into Watkins, foul by Bowles. And boy, Watkins wants to go at him. He's not impressed with the resume, I guess, of Mr. Bowles. The referee uh, taking Watkins aside, telling him, keep that exuberance in check, young man. Watkins went up strong. I guess Bulls tried to intimidate, got the foul. Watkins gave him a little lip for it. Well, anything you can do to take the man off his game. Uh, Bulls only has five in the second half, 13 in the first half. Watkins will have two from here on out. IPFW, when they go to the line, will have two foul shots unless they're fouled on a three-point attempt. Watkins with 12. Eight here in the second half. Make that nine and 13 overall. Cuts the lead back to 10, 71-61 at the nine-minute mark. Two-on-one break. Southern Indiana pulls it out inside. Watkins with a steal. He is coming up large right now. Tate tried to steal it back, and Jackson with a double dribble never had really good control of that ball. Andy Piazza furious. Russ Marsnick jumps off the bench. Another on with tape on his left hand. Don't know what that's about. Injury in the first half. It's a non-shooting hand. Have to see how that affects him here in the second half. 71-61, another turnover with IPFW and a chance to cut it down to double digits. Get the screen. Martin open for three. Bullard trying to cover. Drinking heavily. Simmons out of there with the board. Chance now. Watkins wide open. Yes. Got it. No dribbles. Watkins. No dribbles from about the free throw line. Smart play by Watkins. Looked like he was going to put it on the floor and go in for the jam, but he was wide open. Tap had the dunk. Layup. Had the dunk. I think he did the right thing by just taking the easy layup. And you know they still get two for a layup and two for a dunk. Smart play by Watkins. 14 for him, 10 in the second half, 71-63, 7.48 to go. Watkins coming up big here in the second half. Shane Gibson been on the bench for quite a while. Five on the shot clock, and Bonnestock bails out Bulls with a hack on the wrist. His third. Andy Piazza can't be happy with that foul with five on the shot clock. That'll make the hair fall out. Andy Piazza doesn't want that. You said that, Eric? Eric Agnew. <laughs> on top of the subtle nuances of the game. 71-63, the count bowls on the line for two shots. And as we mentioned, Shane Gibson, he checks right back in the game for Fonstock. Shane Gibson with 15. I'm sure Bulls this is, go to the line. I'm sure this is just going to be a quick blow for Fonestock. They need his punch from the outside. And Bowles missing from the line has another. Well, it was 18 at one point, 69-51. IPFW on a 12-2 run. 
gets his second. 19 for Chris Bowles. 72-63. Seven and a half to go. Shane Gibson in the lineup. That's Gibson now over to Marsnick. Man to man, both teams. Man to man all night. Buller can't buy one. Watkins goes down hard, came down on his head. They cannot call time. It's a five on four. Tate almost losing it. Watkins is still down. Now we're going to have a timeout. He went down. His feet just came out from underneath him. If we can have another look at that one, he came down on his head. Still struggling. As soon as Watkins hit the floor, he was in pain. Mike Gale, the trainer. Get down the floor. Gale helps him up. I believe he looks okay. Fonstock could check in for him. Piazza yeah, not showing much concern for Watkins as he walks off the floor. He's going to let Mike Gale take care of his business there, the trailer for IPFW. Here's another look at that replay and see if we can pick it up here. Watkins. Just oh. off balance there, trying for the tip. Went over the shoulder of Bowles, a long tip attempt. Legs came out from under him, hit the floor hard. Tate, the shot off the side of the back. That should be a turnover, should it not? 72-63, we're back to action. This is fun of stock. Simmons thinks better of a three. Bullard's going to load it up instead. He hasn't hit all night. Good tip by Fonstock to Simmons for the rebound. Great tip by Fonestock. Didn't have a chance to control it, and Simmons getting loose. Took it to the hole right over Bowles for the layup. Simmons sixth point of the game. Well, IPFW scrapping back. Seven-point game, 72-65. Watkins appears to be all right. The alley ready. pass hit the rim. The check back in, and a foul called underneath. Who are they going to put that one on? Marsnick? I believe it will be on Morris Nick in the reach in. I don't know if he whooped him from behind or not. That puts Bowles on the line. He was just there and hit one of two. Going team foul number eight. Team foul number nine, rather, so it is still a one and one. Greg Arrington getting ready to check back in. Bullard gonna have a blow. The foul was on Morris Nick, his third. Bowles go to line. Points 20 and 21 if he hits. Just a note here, Paul, if you'll notice the Seattle scout over there with his jacket on, ready to go home. Not too impressed with Bowles, I believe. Going back to the warm climbs of Seattle, Washington. Bowles misses the front end. Here on in, both teams shooting two free throws. Just over six minutes to go, a seven-point lead for Southern Indiana. Turnover, 72-65. Simmons with a kick out. Marsnick, three, yes! Big three-pointer for Russ Marsnick. Cuts the lead to four. Lead down from 18, I believe, Paul. Now a four-point advantage for USI. Well, USI putting it in the deep freeze maybe too soon. Right back. Ebner with the draft for two. This is Arrington, two on one if he wants it. He's gonna go all the way, yes! Greg Arrington with a big drive, had Monstock down there for help, took it all by himself. 74-70, 5-12 left in the contest. Arrington seventh of the game. And all of a sudden, this is Taylor inside with the reverse off Gibson. Taylor, what a time for him to get loose for his first points of the game. 76-70, Simmons with a push. Now outside, Gibson, Marcinic. Fonestock, 27 left. Knocked out of bounds by Sam Juart. The 
Boy, I might have been quick to bury IPFW. They have come back from an 18-point deficit. I didn't believe they had the firepower or the defensive capabilities to do it. Yep, there he is, the Seattle Supersonic Scout here. And guess what? He's got the book back out. He back does out have the here. book back out. Maybe making some final notes. I don't know. Simmons is playing pretty good. Maybe Gibson. Don't know what, what he thinks of Bowles, though. He was here to see Carlos Skinner on a five-point outing. Bowles with 19 now, a little better. Carlos Skinner of Kentucky Wesleyan did not impress. Back to the game at hand now, eight on the clock. Arrington's got to do something with it. Goes inside, great lob pass, Gibson! Good no pass foul call. Gibson. He hit the deck after the shot. No foul. And it gives them an, it gives them an advantage on the way. Taylor with a dunk, wipe it off. Traveling. That's called for Taylor. Nice dunk, pretty look. Got the travel called. Boy, Bruce Pearl is off yelling at the officials. He's hot, I believe. Taylor, nice move to the hole. 76-72, IPFW down by four. Let's get back to live action. Arrington knocked, he will go to the line. Two free throws. And all of a sudden, Southern Indiana, this is not the way to stay on top of a conference. 18 point lead, foul on Jouard, his fifth ball. Leading score. He has not done anything in the second half. Bring him up for 10 points total, two in the second half. He turned his right ankle early on and has been ineffective in the second half. Paul, the prediction by his brother before the game, 25. Gerard with 10. Well, if they don't need, I'm sure Stan would say, if they don't need my 25, as long as we win the game, that's all right. Chris Bowles has picked it up. There's a shot of Andy Piazza. Boy, he rallying his team around him, took a timeout. It was 67-51 when he took the timeout. IPFW has since gone on a 21-9 run, and it could be as much as a 23-9 run. Free throws critical down the stretch. Greg Erity out of East Chicago, played junior college in Nebraska. And Arrington coming into tonight's contest, 53%. We saw him miss a few earlier on in the first half. Misses the one there. It's a three-point game, 76-73. Four minutes to go. And this could be a wire job right now. Southern Indiana put it in the deep freeze a little too early. Started playing the clock instead of IPFW. This is Tate now with the ball. He can create off the bounce all by himself. Going one-on-one -on -one with Arrington. Clear out for Tate. Oh. Gibson went for the block. Simmons back quickly, beats the defense. No foul call, layup good. Simmons with a pretty layup. His eighth point of the game. Getting into the scoring a little bit. Boy, Simmons bloodied his knee that time. That's the second time he's gone in, giving up body for the layup. Yeah, if the ref spot that knee, that blood on his knee, let's come out of the game ball and get that fixed. 78, 75, 10 on the clock, three in the big clock. Bowles down inside! Count it! The costly foul, block, call on Arrington is Bowles. It's an old-fashioned three-point play. He's had many of those tonight as he gets his 21st point. Arrington trying to recover that time. The lob inside the Bulls. Weak side defense did not get there quickly enough. And Bulls now a chance for three-point play. Scott Simmons taking a rest right now. Land Bullard in to shoot some threes. Bulls with a critical free throw. 81-75, six-point lead. Bulls with 22. 22, about... A little more than his average, about to be expected. Bullard now floating around outside, looking for the three. This is Gibson outside the arc, looking inside. Fauna stock not open. 15 on the clock, 245 on the big one. This is Bullard, thinks about it. Marcinic now penetrating, dishes off. Tried to have Gibson, but in the passing lane. Scott Taylor. Money to 
to go here. 15 on the shot clock. Southern Indiana pulling it out. Gonna give it to Tate and let him create. 10 on the clock. He's starting to go here, Bruce Pearl. Southern Indiana coach telling him to let it fly. Big board loose inside, tied up Bowles. It will be Southern Indiana possession that time. Bowles tying up Land Bullard, a new 35. Boy, they were awful quick on that whistle that time. Neither player really had control of that ball. Leo Watkins back in the contest on the defensive end. Ray Garrington coming out. 201 left, New 35. And if you're IPFW, you have to start looking and thinking about the foul situation. Stan Juard out of the contest, he would have been a good person to think about, only hitting 65%. Everybody else pretty much on the floor right now, over 70% for Southern Indiana. Tate now with six, spinning off Bullard. Bullard airborne. Tate uses him with a double clutch. What a big basket. Three left on the clock, and Tate double clutches and banks it home. Bullard not quite quick enough to hang with Tate. He did as well. If you look at the replay. Tate got him up in the air. And a little more hounding as he came down after the foul in Bullard's face there. Well, it's been an entertaining second half. We're going to take a timeout right now. 83-75, 128 left. Southern Indiana in the lead. Team spirit is alive and well at IPFW. That's because IPFW has established itself as an athletic power, not only regionally, but nationally. With 11 major sports, IPFW offers talented student athletes great opportunities. Success and support of IPFW athletics comes solely from the fans, students, faculty, alumni, and the prestigious Royal Dons Club. The Royal Dons Athletic Club has over 500 members who financially support IPFW athletics, enabling the university to provide scholarships to deserving athletes. Members will receive one or all of the following. Season passes to all sporting events, special seating, hospitality room, plus Royal Don's apparel and gifts. In May of 94, IPFW will host the Men's Collegiate Final Four Volleyball Championships. Royal Don's will be first in line to purchase preferred seating. Be a part of the winning tradition. Join the Royal Don's Club. We need your support. Call IPFW Athletics. Get into the team spirit. Back to live action. Tate hit the free throw there. Increase the lead back up to nine, 84-75. This is Marcinek, has to go for the three. Misses, Martin pulls down the board, 115 left. This is Tate now with the ball in the spin move. Marcinek on the foul. And if Yaza looking for the double team there at half court. What an effort tonight by IPFW. They come in at five and seven. I'm sure uh, Coach Piazza would say this team is not an underdog, but he knew he had a couple big ones at home this week. Beat Kentucky Wesleyan, previously ranked number four in Division Two. Southern Indiana coming in at number 14. Down 18, a tough comeback. I think they cut it to three. Cut it to three on a couple occasions. One but time, like, Bull started to take over. Now Tate getting three-point plays and now some free throws. This is Marcinek now, minute three. Ten-point lead, Gibson loading up. Bulls clearing out. Shane really forced that three. They could use one, but he was heavily guarded and wasn't in the position to put it up. Well, it's coming down to a time right now when there is not much of that commodity on the clock. And that's what Southern Indiana is choosing to do right now, running it. They give it one more time out to Tate. Simmons is on him, 10 on the clock. 
gives it up. This is Taylor now with five. Double team down there. Williams comes up with a steal. This is Gibson, 24 on the clock. IPFW's got to push. Simmons now got to take the three-pointer. Does, misses badly. And this one goes in the books. 85-75 Southern Indiana with 12 seconds left. Gibson to get the foul here to stop the clock. Well, it was a game effort. It was 78-75 with four plus, uh, just under four minutes to go. Or three minutes, rather. About three minutes to go, 78-75. Then we had one of those three-point plays that Chris Bowles has done. Third three-point play of the night. He had two at the end of the second half. Put it out to an 85-75, lead. And IPFW has not scored since. Neil Coyle misses both. Just the countdown to finish it up. Marson at 4-3, misses. And we had a whistle before the buzzer, but that's going to be an 85-75 year final. Southern Indiana prevails in a tough second half. They move to 6-0 in the conference and 11-1 on the year. IPFW uh, falls to 5-8 and 2-3 and and in the Great Lakes Valley Conference. A game comeback by the Mastodons, but just couldn't get over the hump. Made a run in the second half. Khalil Watkins came to life. Shane Gibson, a couple more baskets. Scott Simmons. But I believe that Chris Bowles just kind of took over in the second half. Tyrone Tate ran the offense. Both players got some three-point plays. Crucial times in the game. Bowles finishes with 22. I'm sure he was the leading rebounder, and that hurt IPFW as he got out-rebounded, especially on the defensive glass. Game effort tonight by IPFW, and uh, perhaps in the second, the second half, typified by no one more than Aleel Watkins. He's going to be our dandy Don player of the game. We get a chance to talk with Aleel. He had 11 second-half points, 15 overall, really turned it on and went one-on-one -on, -one on Bowles. His intensity got IPFW fired up, brought him back a little bit, Eric. We're going to take a timeout right now. Eric or I are going to slip down the floor, have a chat with Aleel. We'll be right back after these messages. Your final, 85 to 75, Southern Indiana, your winner tonight. Wake up all the teachers, time to teach a new way. Maybe then they'll listen to what you have to say. The power of teaching. The world won't get no better. If we're just the power to wake up young minds. The power to wake up the world. Teachers have that power. Reach for the power. Teach. I'm Edward James Olmos, and we're recruiting new teachers. Call 1-800-45-TEACH. These basic elements have been used by painters, sculptors, and architects to create artworks of timeless beauty and value. The Art of the Western World television course examines many of mankind's most enduring achievements and provides you with the key to the language of art. to the Hillier Gates Sports Center, the post-game show, putting a wrap on this one. In the books, 85 for Southern Indiana, IPFW 75, a tough win. 
10 point loss for IPFW. Not really indicative of how well they played down the stretch in the second half. But we at IPFW are pleased to be able to bring you cable casts of NCAA athletic competition. We hope you've enjoyed the show and the excitement of intercollegiate sports from IPFW. To provide such programs, we need your support. With the help of many volunteers, we are able to produce these programs at a relatively low cost. Your contribution will help to pay the production costs not covered by the Channel 6 budget. The College Cable Access Center invites you to invest in quality college programming by sending your contribution to Channel 6 at IPFW, 2101 Coliseum Boulevard East, Fort Wayne, Indiana, 46805. And whatever you feel like giving, it will be much appreciated. Well, let's go down the floor and check in with Eric Agnew. He is standing by with Dandy Don, player of the game, Aleo Watkins. Go ahead, Eric, take it away. Eric Agnew here with our Dandy Don, player of the game, Halel Watkins. Halel, tough loss tonight. Got down 18 in the second half. Brought it back to three. What do you think the key was to that little run in the second half? Well, the guys had, at the second half, the guys, they got on me in the, in the team room, and they were telling me I had to really step up. And they've been stressing that for the last two games. And today, I really felt real comfortable about playing. We just couldn't knock down our jump shots out on the perimeter and everything today. But uh, I think this game today is going to help me elevate my game in the future uh, and stuff. You, know? yeah, you went a little one-on-one -on -one there second half with Chris Bowles, 6'10", a little bigger. He kind of took over the second half, ended up with 22. Um, what was the experience like? Well, you know, I played against some of the Chicago greatest players, Marcus Liberty, Nick Anderson, and, you know, I'm not going to down him, man. He's a good player, but I like the challenge. I love the challenge. You know, that's it. Shane Gibson uh, stepped up a little bit tonight at 15. Last couple games, Land Bullard and Scott Simmons have been the man. What, what do you think the key was to tonight's uh, loss? Well, they was rushing the shots a little bit. I think Land and Serge, they took it amongst themselves where they took too many, was rushing a lot of shots on all sides. And they wasn't getting, you know, they got upset with themselves where they weren't comfortable enough where they got in the groove and they felt like shooting the ball. All right, thanks a lot. Halel Watkins, our Danny Don player of the game, 15 points tonight. Tough loss to USI, 85-75. I'm Eric Agnew, going to send it back up to Paul for the closing comments. Thank you very much, Eric. Halel Watkins, player of the game, he had 15 points. Shane Gibson had 17 for IPFW and a losing effort. The key stats that stand out, Southern Indiana 53% from the floor, IPFW just 42. Couldn't take advantage of 25 Southern Indiana turnovers. That was the difference, 53% from the floor for Southern Indiana, 85 to 75. More time to score there. We want to take this opportunity to thank the volunteers. We don't get to get their names up, but we want to let you know that keep an eye on them as the names come up because they do a fine job. The telecast of this IPFW sports event is copyrighted and the sole property of the College Cable Access Center and IPFW and authorized duplication, exhibition, retransmission, rebroadcast, or any other use of this event without express written consent is strictly prohibited. Don't forget to tune in. Friday evening, Channel 6, January 20th, 8-15. IPFW starts the men's volleyball season. University of Pacific. Volley Downs ranked number four. It's going to be a good year. Check it out, Channel 6, 8-15. We'll see you. Eric Eggman.